This is where they uh, basically, I think, came out here to do all the testing. Darwin Hoskins surveys the property at Nortel's former plant in Belleville. He worked here for 38 years. The company is gone, but a toxic legacy remains. Nobody really knew, and obviously at this point, um, we can see some of the impacts of, of what happens when the rules aren't followed, even though there weren't any rules back then. Old Nortel sites in Kingston, London and Brockville are all contaminated with VOCs, volatile organic compounds, chemicals that were used in these telephone equipment factories. Contaminants here in Belleville are now affecting the neighbours. Solvents used to clean equipment weren't properly disposed of. This contaminated the groundwater with cancer-causing chemicals. A toxic plume migrated to the elementary school next door. Before remediation, tests showed low levels of gas from the contaminants inside the school. Students and staff had to move out for six months. Under the advice of public health officials, a new ventilation system was installed as a precaution. Our first and foremost priority was in uh, ensuring the safety of our staff and our students, and so the decision was made uh, to make the rec uh, renovations as were suggested. The board says the air is now safe at the school, but the toxic plume remains and will eventually need to be cleaned up at a cost. Mark Matson worries it's more than a financial that, liability. That, that contaminated water is also leaching into the air and offing gases. It's ultimately making its way into our rivers and our streams and our creeks, creeks and getting into our fish and our birds. Ontario's Ministry of the Environment and several other Nortel creditors claim hundreds of millions of dollars from the Nortel estate. Lawyers that are associated with the Nortel case say the best they can hope for is half of their claims. The rest of the cleanup costs will go to the taxpayer. Julie Ireton, CBC News, Ottawa.